Okay, so since we just did a little review with algebra and a touch of trig and a light introduction to identities, let's now use those methods and see how we actually tackle verifying an identity. And after I put a problem up here, I'll explain why we want to know how to do this. So let's grab something that involves, how about, how about something like this? This would be number 26 on page 464. It says the sine of u times the cosecant of u minus cosine squared of u is equal to the sine squared of u. So this is called an identity. This is a true statement. And we need to verify the identity. We need to verify the identity. I think you can see that, let's say you came up with, let's say you're doing something in science. And you come up with a big, messy looking expression like this, right here. Wouldn't it be a lot nicer, rather than writing that mess out, to simply be able to say, hey, that thing is just sine squared of u? Okay, that's one of the main reasons we want to know how to verify identities. And the real, the real uh, value in this is helping you learn how to clean up messy looking expressions. How to clean up messy looking expressions. Like the fractions we just saw a few minutes ago, okay, in the arithmetic and algebra examples. So, we use our trigonometry skills to help us with this. So we know, here, oh, here's the way I want you to do these. I would recommend you draw a line down your paper right there because you do not move things back and forth across the equal sign through addition or subtraction or multiplication or division like you normally do solving an equation, okay? You keep everything here on this left side and you can mess around with it and you might even want to mess around with the stuff on the right side, but you keep them separated. What I mean by that, then, is you come in here and you go, okay, I have the sine of u, I can't do much with that, but I know I could rewrite cosine or cosecant of u as 1 over the sine of u. So that's being multiplied times the sine of u minus the cosine squared of u. Okay? Now, you know real clearly that this right here is 1. So 1 minus cosine squared of u, and we've got it down to this point. Now, you need to remember something else. What do you remember that might help us with this? Pythagorean theorem, right? You know that the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of an angle is equal to 1. Well, look at that. If you, if you subtract cosine squared of theta from both sides, don't you get sine squared of theta happens to be 1 minus the cosine squared of the angle theta? Yeah. So this gets replaced by sine squared theta. And over on, oops, u. Don't change variables. And you can see over here that that matches this side. Now, back when I first learned trig, or I started learning trig, I should say, it's a lifelong pursuit. <laughs> when you verified identities, a lot of people used to know Latin, which I never really learned. But you would write down QED, which means something like what has been to be proven or demonstrated has been demonstrated, quad erat demonstrata, something like that in Latin. That's more formal. What I do when I get done with one of these things, I just put a smiley face down there. It means I got it. Okay? 
you can put whatever you want. <laughs> okay, something to indicate that you've confirmed that the left side is the same as the right side. Okay. Do you see how you used an identity, a couple identities in here to simplify this mess? Okay. And as I said earlier, the value of you learning how to do these is to be able to simply take nasty looking messes, whether they're algebraic, arithmetic, or trigonometric, or even involving exponentials, and being able to clean them up. Being able to clean them up. That's what we're trying to get you to get good at. You will pull your hair out, just like I have over the years, okay? You will pull your hair out playing with these identities. You will get stuck. You will get stuck. So what you do is just back up, try a different path if you need to. Okay? The intent is to get you to be good with cleaning things up. Okay, enough of a pep talk. Let's do another problem. Let's mix in something that's got our odd even identities in it and fractions and fractions. So let's try Oh, and what I will do probably next next session is I will actually show you how you can confirm these on your calculator on your on your graphing calculator. Yeah, I could make my own up, but I think I'll just grab one out of the book here. I'm going to take a variation on number, how about a variation on number 70 on 465. If I have sine squared of theta minus tangent of theta, and that's divided by cosine squared of theta minus the cotangent of minus theta. And they're telling us that that is equal to, that cleans up to be simply tangent squared of theta. And we need to verify that. I made a slight variation on the problem in the book. Okay. Usually, what's going to be best, there's multiple paths to get to the result to verify that one side's the same as the other. Multiple paths. But usually, it's going to be a good idea for you to take whatever trig functions you see and turn them back into expressions involving sine and cosine. And you can do that with any of the six tr any of the four trig functions, can't you? After sine and cosine, you can take those other four and write them in terms of sine and cosine. Yeah, okay. So that's not a bad idea. The one little twist I put in this problem is this cotangent of a negative angle. Notice all the other expressions here involve the positive angle theta. Right? So what we want to do is, first of all, get rid of that. And you need to think about your cotangent for a second. Cotangent looks like this, with asymptotes at multiples of 180 degrees. Okay? That's an odd function. That's your cotangent function. And that's an odd function. So the cotangent of, if I'm over here at some negative theta value, here's the cotangent reading of negative theta right there, the y value on that graph, right? If I come symmetrically over to positive theta, I get the same value, don't I, except they're opposite in sign. Here's the cotangent of theta. And so all I have to do is take the negative of this value, and that's going to equal that value. Okay. So I can come in here, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to have sine squared theta minus 
cosine theta, oops, I'm sorry, sine theta divided by cosine theta. Notice how I'm careful. Look at this. This, this is, you can think of this as over one, right? And then subtracting from it where the fraction bars are in line with that to see clearly that I have a fraction here minus a fraction there. And then down below, I have cosine squared of theta. Think of it as over one. And minus a minus cotangent theta right there becomes plus, right, cotan theta, which is, help me, cosine of theta over sine of theta. Cotan of negative theta becomes, because it's an odd function, becomes the negative cotan of theta. The negative times the negative becomes a positive. Cotan theta. Cotan theta is defined as x over y on your unit circle, or cosine of theta over sine of theta. OK, we now have a complex fraction. I'm going to move my equal sign over a little bit. Give me a little more space. And this takes us back to the thing we saw a few minutes ago with arithmetic. What's the common denominator of all four fractions here? How many factors of sine theta do they have to be? You just need one of them, don't you? How many cosine thetas do you need? Just one of them. So the product of those is our LCD of all these fractions. So I'm going to be multiplying the numerator by sine theta, cosine theta, that product. And I'm going to be multiplying my denominator by sine theta times cosine theta. Steve, don't use a slash, an angled slash, when you make your fractions, OK? Like we practiced last week, <laughs> OK? Everybody else take that to heart. Don't always make your fraction bars horizontal, because if you put them at an angle, it's hard to tell what's in your numerator and what's in your denominator. OK, now, we now distribute this common denominator, don't we? So what do you get up front here? This product. How many sines thetas do you have? Three. Yeah, sine cubed theta, don't you? So we end up with sine cubed of theta times a cosine of theta minus what happens here? Help me. The cosines, the cosines reduce out, and you end up with sine squared theta. Fractions are gone in the numerator now. Fractions are gone. It's not complex anymore like it was up here. You see how, the, how many people feel some level of confusion here? Uh, several of you are due. And what is confusing, and I've taught this enough to know, is you're, you need to be able to see this as a single little thing, just like a 2 or a 3 or an x. Just think of it as a single thing. Okay? Just think of it as one little thing. OK. And then you won't have as much of a problem. OK. It's a factor. It's a factor. OK. Down below, when you take cosine squared times this LCD, you're going to get cosine cubed, aren't you? You're going to get a sine theta with a cosine cubed of theta. Sine theta with a cosine cubed of theta. Plus, what happens here in the distribution? You lose the sines, and you end up with cosine squared. So we now, in one step, turn this into a single fraction, a beautiful single fraction. Is it reduced? How do we reduce fractions? 
we look for a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. Happens to be in the numerator. How much of it can we factor out? We can factor out a sine squared theta. And you're left with what here? One sine theta is left and a cosine theta, right? Minus, you factor out sine squared, what remains here? A placeholder one multiplier. If you redistribute this, you get back to sine cubed theta times cosine theta minus sine squared theta. I always check factoring by doing that in my head. Next step, down below, factor out a, factor out a what? Cosine squared, cosine squared theta. Cosine squared theta, right? And you're left with a what? Sine theta, cosine theta, plus a placeholder. Does this reduce to the right side? Careful. Does this reduce to the right side that you see up there, tangent squared theta? Here's tangent squared theta, right? Because you could come over on your right side here and replace this with a sine of theta over the cosine of theta being squared, which is typically written sine squared theta over a cosine squared theta. We've got that much of it right here, but this part is not reducing. So what kind of a conclusion do we draw? An unhappy face, right? This does not reduce to that. But remember what I did when I started this problem? I monkeyed with it, didn't I? Didn't I play with it back here? I came in and I changed what the textbook said was simply cotan theta here. Now what I should have done to make this identity work, if I was going to put cotan a minus theta in here, I should have changed this sign right here to a plus sign. Let me do that, okay, so we can make ourselves happy, okay? So if I change this to a plus sign in my altered problem, then be careful in your notes that you track the changes. So if this is a plus sign in the original, cotan of minus theta is replaced with minus cotan theta, which means right down here, this remains as a, not a positive sign here, but a negative sign right here, right? Which tracks as a negative sign right down here, which tracks as a negative sign right down here. And now you look at this common multiplier on top and bottom, numerator and denominator, and those common multipliers, those common factors reduce out, and now we finish this identity by being happy. And we still have our hair. Okay, have fun. <laughs> Got a little homework to do to practice these skills. Okay, we'll see you uh, tomorrow.